Hey everybody, it's Wendy Lane Wright, the Hollywood Talent Manager in LA, California. And I am talking today about relationships. It's going to be not a very long video because I'm going to try to shorten my videos a little bit, even though I want to give you the experience of kind of spending time with me. Because I know when you're starting out and you're new, a lot of people in this business don't spend time with new people, and I think that sucks. Anyway, um, but, you know, as I've alluded in the past, not being 17 anymore myself, uh, some time has passed and that has given me perspective to look back at my life and say, okay, what have I learned? What can I share? Um, I've had many relationships over the years. I've been married a couple times. Uh, I've been divorced a couple times. I was with, uh, my, my, with my, my husband now. We've been together 12 years, and the one before that was almost nine. And then a couple short little relationships in between, uh, a year, two, three, four years, whatever. So I've had experience with men, and I've had experience with good, good relationships and some crappy ones. Okay. What I've learned about that, and this goes for men too, because you've had all that same experience is that relationships that suck your energy only keep you from the time you need to spend on your real purpose in life. Doesn't mean you can't learn from negative relationships. You know, we always learn from negative and positive relationships. It's, I get it. But when choosing people to put in your inner circle, I always think of it like this. If, if you're on stage, the first few rows of the audience you don't want hecklers. You don't want people booing you, tearing you down, telling you you can't do it, holding you back, interfering, sucking your time up with things that don't matter. You want the people in the front of your audience and your, in your theater of your life to be like, yes, go for it. You got this. You can do it. I believe in you. You're amazing. Do it. Go for it. It's the same in a relationship. You know, the people that you are spending the most time with need to be the ones that uplift you the most. You do not want, you do not want to spend or, or give those seats, those choice seats, to people who aren't 100% fully in your corner. I got allergies today, so if I have to do this, <laughs> I'm just going to have to deal with that. I have lots of allergies today. Um, you know, so you get my point. The seats that cost the most in the theater, you know, they give you the best view, the, ver the best view, the closest view. Um, your life, it's, it's your turn. It's your time. And hecklers don't belong in the front seats of your, of your show. I, I don't even want them in the frickin' auditorium, honestly. But, and, and the thing is, sometimes those people are in your own family. They're your sister, your brother, your cousins, your aunts and uncles. You know, if you can't get rid of them completely, move them to the freaking back row where they can't, you can't see them and they can hardly be heard. You know, um, just keep positive people in your life. If you're in a relationship where the person is not supporting your dreams or your goals and is giving you reasons why it can't be done, that is not the person for you. Honestly. That is not the person for you. And you may have chemistry with that person. It feels good, blah, blah, blah. But in the long run, they're harming your soul. They're harming that spark in you that is divine, that God has placed inside you, to, that gave you the dream. And you need, you need kindling on that, you know, not water. You need, like, God, I'm full of freaking comparisons this morning. I think you know what I mean. I've been in a relationship with um, a guy who cheated on me years ago. I was married to him. He tried to cheat on me with my best friend. She called me and she said, hey, your husband's in my dorm room. What should I do? Should I call the police or what? I was like, yeah, call the police. Sounds good. And then I remember racing back to the apartment we lived in and clearing out all my stuff, calling my dad and saying, daddy, can I come home? That marriage that you said wasn't going to last, well, didn't last. <laughs> uh, I went back home, finished college, you know, living with my daddy, and it was nice. My dad was always one of those people that uplifts me, encourages me, supports me. You know, he's unconditionally loved me. And the good thing is I know that men like that exist because I was raised by one. So I could see when they're not like that. 
Sometimes if you've been raised by a person who hasn't been able to give you the kind of love and, and adoration or time that you need, it's hard to understand that there are other people out there who can and who will. And a lot of times we spend time picking the same people from our past where we had problems with and trying to fix them so that we could get what we really wanted that we never got before. And I want you to understand this, honeys, all of you, men, women, you cannot fix people. You cannot change people. You cannot undo your past. And no amount of trying, pleading, manipulating, sex, nothing is going to turn someone into somebody they're not. So if you're with somebody and it's not working, it's like a circle being in a square and it just doesn't go in, no amount of time is going to make that fit. It either fits or it doesn't. It either works or it doesn't. And if it doesn't work, my suggestion is cut and run. The, soon, the sooner the better. As soon as you realize it. Because honestly, time is still passing. Excuse me. And five years could be gone that you just spent trying to fix the person you're with. They didn't make you happy. You didn't make them happy. Whatever. You said you loved each other, but... Five years have gone by. That person's still the same person they were when you met them. It still doesn't work, and you just lost five years of your life. Five years of your career! Okay. That is the kind of information you get in hindsight after you've had three, four, five relationships, and you've been able to look back and see what works and what doesn't work. My husband now, and I'm very open with you guys, you know, I just tell you the truth, because, like, if older people don't tell you the truth, what are you going to learn? What are you going to learn? Uh, not that I'm that much older. <laughs> um, my husband now is like the most amazing guy. And the guy I had before that was a great guy. You know, he, he's a record producer. He produces a lot of stuff for television and film. And he's very successful, very wealthy, very loving, always kind to me. Probably because I had a kind daddy. So I like that kind of guy. Um, but he was a workaholic and he worked all the time. Kind of like my daddy. And I... You know, I kept expecting he was going to be different, going to be different. You know, he's going to stop being such a workaholic, but he never did. And we've been apart 20 years now, and he still is a workaholic, and I've seen him with other relationships. And so people don't change the core of who they are. My, cus my husband now is really, really present. You know, when you're talking to him, he's not thinking about work. He's not wanting to get somewhere else. Um, he's fully present in the moment. And when we have a discussion, uh, an argument or whatever, which we don't really have too many of, but if we do, we talk about it. We work it out. There's no resentment. We don't hold on to things. I'm not blaming him for six weeks. He's not blaming me. We talk through things because we can talk because we're friends. So if you're in a relationship where that person isn't listening to you and isn't kind to you and doesn't support who you are, it's time to ditch them and move on to someone who does. Uh, it's hard to hear. It's hard to do. Sometimes when you're letting someone go, you got to write it down on a piece of paper. Everything you want to say, say it and disconnect. I remember when, um, when my husband first got divorced from his wife, she was a nightmare. And, <laughs> excuse me, she would just blah, 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 talk, and he'd be trying to say something about custody with his daughter or something, and he would just go like this. Here's what I need to do. I need to pick her up at 5 o'clock, and so I will see you at 5 o'clock. Have a great day. <laughs> and he wouldn't even listen. And that's kind of what you have to do. You have to detach from the, the unhealthy, what's that called? It's just like you're engaged in something that's just going back and forth. You're in an argument, and you're, you're just in back and forth and back and forth. And one of you has to walk away. You have to just walk away, walk away. So that's what I want to say to you guys today. Walk away if it's not in your best interest. Move on. Find someone who really gets you, who loves you, who supports you, who you and feel the same way about them. Someone that you're nurturing. If you know that you don't really want the best for the person you're with, get away from them. They deserve somebody better than that. Okay? Do you want more relationship advice? Ask me questions below. I have some. See ya.